The Donbass has turned into a terrible battle of attrition. And on the Russian news, they reported this mission by paratroopers to rescue comrades seriously wounded by Ukrainian fire. We were at the front line. The tank was firing. At first it was firing near us, then straight at us. Russian TV even offers some glimpses of this bloody reality. These wounded men belong to the 331st Parachute Regiment, and through carefully sifting Russian media, official and social, we can tell the story of the unit, their home community, and their painful experience of the Ukraine war in greater detail. We can even explain how this particular vehicle came to be here. Home for the 331st Regiment is the town of Kostroma, 300 kilometers northeast of Moscow. Before the war, they felt that even among the picked units of the airborne forces, they were an elite. And why not? That's what their generals told them. Currently, they're our best of the best in service, of all the units, of all the academies, of all the airborne forces. By February this year, the regiment was training through the winter cold near its base. Being rapidly deployable, it was one of the last elements of Russia's invasion plan to be put into place. But its units had to be flown down from Kostroma to Belarus by mid-February, ready to take part in the drive towards the Ukrainian capital, Kiev. But did the soldiers know where they were going? The widow of one has said... He did not go to war, he just went on a work trip. Both he and I knew and thought he was going on a work trip. We packed him the usual things as for a training camp. We said goodbyes as usual. But the paratroopers were heading to war. As part of the advance to Kiev, they got hurled into the bitter battles to the northwest of that city in a push from Hostomel Airport towards Bucha. In mid-March, the paratroopers were engaged in a disastrous battle on the road south, pounded for days by Ukrainian artillery and special forces in a combat in which their commander, Colonel Sergei Sukharev, and dozens of his men were killed. For those patching together the wounded, it was hardly what they'd expected. I was injured in my left shoulder on the 20th of March as a result of artillery fire on the medical squad. As reports reached the regiment's home garrison in Kostroma, bewildered users of the Kontakte, the Russian Facebook, expressed their alarm. Our boys, when will it all stop? It's breaking my heart when I see that someone dies every day. They're dying in batches. By early April, we'd identified 39 soldiers from the regiment who'd been killed in action. But local people told us the figure was nearer to 100, and in any case, the regiment's war was far from over. Later in March, Russia gave up on its attempts to take Kiev and withdrew its forces. Elements of the airborne task force were part of the columns that left Ukraine to fight another day. The 331st vehicles were loaded on trains at Baranovichi, bound, we now know, for Belgorod in Russia. And then something interesting happened. A public information campaign to reassure people in Kostroma that Ukrainian taunts that the regiment had been wiped out were untrue, and in some ways even to counter our own first report on the regiment, which we've seen referred to on Kostroma's social media. In Belgorod, a group of veterans from the regiment visited survivors, reporting back on the local TV station evidently in an attempt to reassure families back home. 
We wanted to see for ourselves. I can say that after visiting both regiments, after visiting a few companies from one of the battalions of our regiment, we were convinced that their mood is fine. They know what they're doing. They know why they're doing it. Meanwhile, the home community in Kostromar was preparing, along with the rest of Russia, for the Victory Day celebrations of the 9th of May. The regiment, usually a fixture at the Red Square Parade, was unable to send a contingent this year. Instead, wounded from the 331st and the artillery regiment, also based in Kostromar, got a hospital visit from their governor. I wish you a speedy recovery, and to those who can, a speedy return. Greetings from fellow countrymen. Kostroma has begun to love the 331st and 1065th regiments even more. At this school, another sign of official media and messaging catching up with the grim costs of Ukraine. A memorial service for Daniil Turapov, a former pupil killed in the 331st disastrous March battle north of Kiev, and now a subject for emulation by the pupils here. I think that we have to talk about our heroes a lot. Children hear about them. They see these events on television, but they don't understand them because they are little. We're trying to explain it to them. But watching the local media coverage, it's hard to gauge wider public sympathy. This Victory Day concert brought wives and families of the 331st paratroopers together, proudly wearing their telnyashki or striped airborne tops the bonds within the regimental community are evidently strong. But how many members of the wider public attended? There aren't too many visible here. Or indeed, when this veteran paratrooper sang songs to raise money to send comfort packages to the men, just a few babushki stopped to listen. And in terms of the views of the garrison town more widely, one person who's been compiling details of the regiment's casualties has said recently, I feel sorry for each of these boys, but I don't consider them to be heroes. I consider them to be victims. When I asked the question on social media, what did they die for? In the comments, I was called a complete idiot. Back in the borderlands, the 331st, having received some reinforcements and amalgamated some of its companies in Belgorod, was sent back into action near Izum in mid-May. After weeks without notifying deaths, we started to see signs of casualties again on social media memorial walls. Why don't they send the children of officials of the same age? It's too early to die at 23. It was the same before, Chechnya, Afghanistan. They also sent young people. They are now combat veterans. It's not just young people who were buried in Kostroma. And the children of officials would hardly be professional soldiers. The airborne combat vehicles, known by the acronym BMD, tell a story about the people and their experience. Just before departure, note the markings. The inverted triangle with a three in it and a call sign beginning with three, denote the 3rd Battalion of the 331st. Then, in April, look at this BMD. The V denotes the group of forces in the failed drive on Kiev. The inverted triangle is almost painted over, but it's just visible. Note the call sign, 391. We spotted it again in Luhansk district a few days ago. To the old V marking, someone has added a Z, and on the rear of the vehicle, Kostrom R. On the front, Boyevoye Drug, or Fighting Friend. By this point, the paint-daubed sides have become a testimony to the regiment's experiences. Back in April, we compiled a list of 39 verified members of the 331st Regiment who'd been killed in Ukraine. 
Since then, we've been adding to that, and we now have 62 confirmed deaths from the unit in that conflict. Now, if you add in those that haven't been announced yet, are listed as missing, and the wounded, in other words, the total estimated casualties, people who can no longer serve in the regiment, we think that's something between four and 500, equivalent to around half the strength that the 331st had at the beginning of this operation. There are no official figures, of course. Rather, some individuals are memorialised, as in this Moscow tribute mural. Corporal Danilo Zudkov was one of those killed in the 331st Butcher battle in March. Now, like many of those who fell then, he's lionised on this grand scale. Generals are like surgeons, it's sometimes said. They bury their mistakes. Russian garrisons commemorate the paratroopers killed in Ukraine with an ever-increasing display of memorials. Far from gaining swift victories or easy laurels there, the men of the 331st Regiment are now trapped in an attritional battle that consumes lives on a terrible scale. No.